It was September 1992 by the time the third SDIO mission was nearly ready to be shipped out to Wallops Island. The final assembly of the nose cone was complete and the final communications, testing and launch rehearsals were the last order of business before it all got packed up and shipped. Since I'd been assigned to the program nearly full time, the engineers, or as they like to call themselves, sounding rocketeers, had gotten used to my nearly constant presence. It finally became clear to them that I was not there to catch them making mistakes, but to document the project for history, or, as I like to tell them, catch them doing something great. The size of our payloads got bigger with each project, and so did our launch vehicle. This time out, NASA assigned Blockhouse 3, Launch Area 3B. Blockhouse 3 is a serious blockhouse. It was like walking into a NASA museum. Racks of old consoles lined the back wall. Some looked like they had been from the Apollo days. The blockhouse door was a serious six inches thick, but then our main booster was solid propellant, similar to the SRBs they use on the shuttle, which means that it was pretty much a 15 foot tall stick of dynamite. The launch pad was covered in one of those temporary buildings like they used in Desert Storm, which was good because it got pretty windy. What I discovered was that the 15-foot stick of dynamite that was to be our main booster was a 30-year-old Ares rocket, but since it didn't seem to bother anybody else, I never gave it a second thought. This might be a good time to explain our mission this time out. Those red metal caps are covering infrared emitters. When the rocket goes into space, this becomes the target. As I explained in the last episode, one of the SDI mission scenarios was to crash a projectile into the booster of an enemy nuclear missile during the ascent or mid-course stages of flight. So that it would fall harmlessly back to Earth. This stage was to simulate the rocket plume for the sensors in the instrument package, and the instrument package was tasked to turn around and smash into the target. That was the plan, anyway.
So as rocket assembly proceeded at a fevered pace, the control room took on the appearance of a science fiction movie set. 